If you're interested in a sport bike but have no interest in bikes that fall into the ultra performance category, like the Yamaha R1 and BMW S1000RR, then the middleweight class is your go-to. The most popular middleweight performance bikes come with names that usually include a 6 and an R, powered by an inline 4 with something in the range of 600 cc of displacement. If you're looking for something different with a bit more character, your options are very, very slim. One of those options is the Ducati Panigale V2, which made its debut for the 2020 model year. The V2 nomenclature falls in line with the rest of Ducati's performance sport bike lineup that includes the Panigale V4. With the starting price of $16,495, the Panigale V2 isn't cheap compared to bikes like the Honda CBR600RR and Yamaha R6. Sure, it's Italian, technically a super mid, and produces nearly 30 horsepower more than those bikes. But the $5,000 premium may be hard to justify for some. That got me thinking. Is it possible that the outgoing Ducati model, the 959 Panigale, is the better buy? The 959 gives you 98% of what you'll find with the V2, but on the used market, it's closer in price to the class of middleweight 600s. So in today's video, we're going to go for a ride with the 2019 Ducati 959 Panigale and see what it has to offer. The 959 Panigale was released for the 2016 model year as a replacement for the 899 Panigale. Much like the V2 that replaced the 959, the 959 saw slight updates over its predecessor. The most meaningful was the stroked V-twin engine that saw its displacement grow from 890cc to 955cc. There were other tweaks to the design and the swing arm was lowered by 4mm. After everything was said and done, Ducati had a bike that met European emission standards and didn't sacrifice performance in the process. The 959 Panigale remained virtually the same over its lifespan. The one we have here is a 2019 Ducati 959 Panigale. In terms of styling, the 959 has large body fairings that flow from the front end and down the bike side. The front headlights have a narrow gaze with slim LED lighting and halogen bulbs. Flanking the headlights are openings for air to pass through for better aerodynamics and cooling. There's plenty of curves to the bike's nose and it's instantly recognizable as a Ducati. There's 959 Panigale badging on the side fairings and the fairings are each uniquely styled on the left and right side. The left side has dual fin-like openings on the bottom, while the right side has a cutout for the exhaust that runs underneath the seat. Because the cast aluminum monocoque two-piece frame uses the engine as a structural member, there isn't much to be seen structurally. The bike has clean and smooth lines, the seat is flat and supportive, and the tail has an aggressive angle. In the rear, the taillights line the two openings. The wheels are 17 inches and have a split five-spoke design. They're wrapped in 12070 and 18060 Diablo Rosa Corsa tires, front and rear. The suspension consists of fully adjustable 43mm Showa Big Piston forks in the front and a Saks fully adjustable rear shock. Slowing power is provided by Brembo 4-piston calipers and 320mm disc up front, and a Brembo 2-piston caliper with a 245mm disc in the rear. The 959's exhaust is unique in that it runs underneath the seat and then exits behind the foot pegs on each side. If you have ever heard stories about Ducatis heating up your rear end, that certainly applies to the 959. In particular, my inner right thigh remained very toasty throughout most of my time on this bike. A 
955cc, 90-degree L-twin engine powers the 959. It produces 150 horsepower and 79 pound-feet of torque. Getting onto the 959 Panigale is easy to do with the seat height of 32.5 inches. However, it became immediately apparent that this bike is not happy doing any sort of commuting, and it's very grumpy if you're riding it anywhere below 60%. Sport bikes tend to get a bad rap for being uncomfortable and their bite your head off mentality. This bike certainly has all of those traits more than any sport bike I can remember riding. The moment I started it up, the bike seemed nervous, shaky, non-compliant, and I even thought to myself, is this actually a modern bike? Everything about it felt clunky, as if it had shoddy build quality. It made no sense because everyone always associates Ducatis with being the best of the best sport bikes, the dream bike every little kid wants to own. How can this thing feel so unrefined? That was due to my own ignorance, having spent time only riding a Ducati Monster and not a proper Ducati sport bike. Much like hopping on the back of an angry crocodile, you shouldn't expect it to coddle you. This bike was built for a purpose, and if you aren't meeting its demands, you likely won't be enjoying yourself. The electronics on this bike are a great example of its overall philosophy. It has all the aids and controls you would expect from a modern supersport, but user-friendliness is non-existent. There's ride-by-wire, traction control, engine brake control, a Ducati quick shifter, and ABS. Switching between the different drive modes is easy enough, but trying to program the engine brake's aggressiveness or ABS will undoubtedly test your ability to be patient. That's simply what the 959 Panigale brings to the table. It's more like a cat than a dog. Dogs aim to please and depend on their masters. Cats are not concerned with your feelings. And if you don't come correct, the 959 will surely let you know. Once it's made clear who is in charge, the 959 Panigale becomes one of the most enjoyable bikes to rip on and every time you get on it, it wants to pull hard out of the next corner. It's first and foremost a track bike, that doesn't mean you can't enjoy yourself on the streets. It just means you better be very mindful of what you're getting yourself into trying to extract any levels of performance from the 959 outside of a closed circuit. The twin engine pulls strong, and like many twins, the power comes on early and remains flat throughout the short RPM band. There's gobs of power everywhere, and the torque can be felt as soon as you imagine twisting the throttle. It's a characteristic you won't find with any inline four. With 150 horsepower, it has just the right amount of power to be scary yet accessible, i.e. perfect in my opinion. But let's get back to the reason we're here. Considering you can find a 959 for under $14,000 on the used market, making it nearly $3,000 less than the V2, what exactly does the new bike have versus the old one? Aside from the name that sought to align with the new V4, the V2 is virtually the same as the outgoing bike. It shares the same 955cc engine with a slight 5 horsepower increase. The frame is the same, so are the suspension components, though they have been tuned a bit softer on the V2. The fuel tank is also the same. Notable changes include an updated exhaust, front end styling that provides for more aggressive LED headlights, a single sided swing arm, and a new 4.3 inch TFT color display pulled from the larger V4 that can control the upgraded suite of electronics now offering a six axis IMU. For the price, we would ask ourselves, 
is the new electronic suite worth nearly $3,000. The TFT display and IMU are by far the most meaningful changes to the V2 over the 959. In some ways, you can almost think of the electronics as a package you would be adding to your 959 should you choose to go for the V2, as none of the other upgrades change the bike in a significant way, aesthetics aside. Otherwise, not considering the 959 isn't the clear way to go if you're interested in buying a new mid-level Supersport. We can't conclude and say that a used 959 Panigale is the better buy between the two, but the 959 Panigale at $13,500 is indeed an excellent buy for those looking for a sport bike. If you're the type of rider that can care less about electronics, the 959 is a no-brainer and you can save your cash for some nice gear. But if you like cutting edge, the V2 with its upgraded looks and electronics may be worth the extra money. Either way, when compared to bikes like the CBR600RR and Yamaha R6, Ducati's smaller Panigale is not as friendly to play with. It competes closer to the Suzuki GSX-R750 and triumphs discontinued Daytona in terms of power and price. So buyer beware, whatever you choose, the V2 or the 959 Panigale, this bike has one goal in mind, and that's to go fast. Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, subscribe, and leave a comment below. You can also find us on Instagram at RideXDrive.